All right, so first off, you guys know, where are the electrons? Around the nucleus, right? You can do a heck of a lot of chemistry with no deeper understanding than that. However, it is not that simple. Are you guys okay? So today, we're going to talk a little bit more about this. Okay, we're going to talk about some terminology you've actually seen before. There, the electrons are found around the nucleus. They are found around the nucleus, but in their location around the nucleus, they are found in these things called shells. Sometimes we call them orbitals. Or we call them energy levels. Those should be just like at least a little bit familiar to you. Or you've like seen those words some other time in your life, right? Does that ring? Do they like ring a bell and be like, yeah, I don't really know anymore, but I've seen them before. Okay. That's all you need. So these, these three things are words that we are, they're kind of interesting just because they technically, they each have their own meaning really, but we kind of often kind of throw them around interchangeably a little bit just because their meanings are kind of similar. So today we're going to talk about this one called orbitals and we're going to use its kind of more formal definition. Okay. But really all of these are just terms for places where you find electrons around the nucleus. Okay. And like I said, it gets way more complicated the more you think about it and the more you learn about it, but that's a good enough definition for us here in this class. Orbitals is kind of one of these specific ways that we talk about this. And there are four types of orbitals. Okay, and they have these names. S, P, D, and F. And they are always written with lowercase letters like that. We will pretty much only talk about these two because the D and F orbitals have some rules that get pretty complicated pretty quick, and that is beyond the scope of this class. The important thing here about the S and P orbitals is that S orbitals can hold two electrons and P orbitals can hold six electrons. Sound good? Pretty easy so far, right? So all of this stuff about the orbitals here is based on some super complex mathematics that once again is just way beyond what we're gonna do in here. Um, it's way beyond probably even my mathematical ability but what we're going to look at and realize today is this idea that the chemists, when they were studying chemicals back in the day and realizing and learning all these things about electrons, they were realizing that the periodic table didn't exist back then. They were in the process of making the periodic table. They were, gonna, they were realizing that as you went up in atomic number, some cyclic things ended up happening in terms of the properties. So like you would go like element number one shares certain properties with element number three, for example. And element number two shares some of the same properties with other elements going on up. Does that make sense? And then so what they, and that's how they originally started to put the periodic table into the shape and the order that it is right now is by having those, those properties matching up. The reason why those properties cycle around the way that they do is because of electrons filling up these places. So Get your PR table handy. I'm going to ask you a couple questions off of it. So find element number one, which is hydrogen. 
Okay, and I'm just going to tell you, element number one has how many electrons, by the way? One. That's an easy question, right? It has one electron in its s orbital, in its smallest orbital. Okay, now look over at helium. Well, how many electrons does helium have? Two. That second electron gets put into the s orbital because the s orbital can hold two electrons. Make sense? That's pretty easy, right? So now you go down to the next row to lithium. Look at lithium. How many electrons does lithium have? Three. So you're going to get out a new, a new s orbital. You're going to have two s orbitals now. So you're going to have the first one is still filled up because we filled them up with the first two electrons, right? Because lithium has three total. Is that making sense? Okay. But now you're going to have another electron that you put in the next s orbital. You see that? Is that making sense? It's probably only making sense if you're looking at your periodic table right now. Are you looking at your periodic table, Anel? Okay. So then look over to the next one for beryllium. Can you guess where beryllium's fourth electron is going to go? into the s orbital because you've got two s orbitals now so you can hold four electrons total does that make sense all right now i want you to notice something about the periodic table do you notice that we skipped that whole spot in the middle there before we get to element number five that's because the next thing that happens is that we get a p orbital and there's this complicated system of rules for what orbital comes next we might learn those this year or we might not some years we do them and some years we don't but the important thing i want you to know is it the reason why that block is not there, like that, that has a sort of a blank block in the middle, is because the next thing that happens is that we start putting new electrons into the p orbital. Okay? And so that block over there by boron, that's where the p orbital starts getting filled up. So boron has all of its s, all of those first two s orbitals filled up, and then it has one in its p orbital, and then you want to guess where carbon's fifth electron or sixth electron goes? also in the P, and nitrogen's seventh electron, also in the P, and we keep on going until the P gets filled up. Does that make sense? That's, all, that, that's as far as we're going to go for now. All right? Now let's go back and you look at your, this periodic table right here. This periodic table only has how many columns? eight, right? Do you notice that they basically just like skip that chunk in the middle? Do you notice that? Right? Because like on the actual periodic table, there will be a big gap in between these two, right? Compare it to your actual periodic table. Notice that there's a big gap there, right? But the important thing is that these numbers right here, the 1a, the 2a, the 3a, the 4a, the 5a, the 6a, the 7a, the 8a, those numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, talk about how many electrons are in that sort of like the outermost biggest energy level or outermost biggest orbital. Does that make sense? So here's the thing. There's two here, right? Duh, because there's two. Then here you put them in the s orbital. Here you start filling up the p orbital. Now here you're going to have to get out a new s orbital, fill those up, and then you start filling up a new p orbital. So do you see how this kind of just like builds and repeats on itself? Okay, am I going too fast here? Is this hard to understand? Please tell me if it is. Okay, so this block of elements right here is the ones that we're going to study because these are the ones that obey the easy rules. And once you learn these easy rules, then some other time in your life, you can take a more advanced chemistry class and learn the rules for the, um, the D and F orbitals because they're more complicated. Sound good? Cool? So let's write a couple things down here. Fill up S, then another S, then it's going to alternate then P, then S again, then P again. And it kind of gets simple. It gets a little more complicated past there, but the idea there is that they alternate, okay? The 
8, 1A through 8A columns. represent what we call valence electrons. And that just means the outermost. Okay? Whenever you make a compound group the electrons into eights does that make sense i'm going to draw you a little picture here to help you see what i'm talking about Let's do sodium chloride just because everybody likes salt. How many of you guys like salt? How many of you guys like to sprinkle salt on things? How many of you put more salt on your popcorn? Anybody like extra salt on your popcorn? No? Does anybody ever go to the movie theater up in Niles? You know how you like get the, the uh, if you haven't been there, you should try it someday. I don't know if they're open or allowed or whatever right now, but you should try it someday. You get your popcorn and you sprinkle the extra stuff in your bag. You know what I'm talking about? Have you ever seen like a little kid in line ahead of you, like putting way too much in? Right? Okay. All right. Sidetrack. Sodium. How, what column is sodium in? Look at your periodic table. What column is sodium in? Say it again. 1A. That means that sodium has one electron in its outermost level, in its valence shell, we call it. How about chlorine? By the way, I know what time it is. We're getting close to the end here. I'm not losing track of time. How many electrons does chlorine have? What column is it in? What? Seven. So it has seven electrons. I'm going to draw them this way because there's this is a rule, but don't stress out about it if you couldn't figure it out before. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay? Now, I'm going to form a compound with sodium and chlorine. But I want to make a group of eight electrons because that's what makes electrons happy is to fill up all of those eight spots in the S orbital and the P orbital. How do we make a group of eight here? How many sodiums do we need with how many chlorines? Do you see why? Is it like super obvious now? Because I have seven here and I have one here. So this one can go over here and then I get a group of eight. Right? So that means that the compound is NaCl. And there's the pattern that we saw before. Let's do a second one. Once again, chlorine. So I'll just put my seven there because we did that already. There's seven. How many does calcium have? What column is calcium in? Two A. So how many electrons? Two. Can you see what's going to happen here? You got one left over. This one's going to go over there, right? So far, so good. But now we have an extra electron. So what do we have to do? Look at the formula for calcium chloride and take a guess. To what? Chlorine. Two chlorines. We add another chlorine. And there you go. So it's calcium chloride. Does that make sense? You see it happening there now? Last one. I want you to try one more on your own. I want you to try aluminum chlorine on your own. Try it. So 
So look at element, look at aluminum, see what column it's in, see how many electrons it has. All right, I'm going to start to do it. So if you're confused, you can watch me. If you know what you're doing, then finish before you look up. Okay, there it is. When you're ready to look, you can look. Does that make sense? You can do any of them now, can't you? They're all the same. You want a tricky one? You want a challenge one? No? If you want a challenge one, do calcium and selenium. No, calcium and phosphorus. 